Hey guys, Checkers here from Climax Combo once again, uh, bringing you another deck profile. This time I'll be profiling my Guilty Crown deck that I played with a few weeks back. It's been a while since we've had that dual set, but I finally got around to doing the profile, so... Uh, let's see. This is just a standard, the standard Guilty Crown deck. Uh, green, red, blue. Well, most builds usually have, tend to have. Um, so yeah. Uh, let's get started. So first off, for level zeros, I run for these zero zero shoes, two five power. Uh, if you have one or less other characters on the stage, then he gets plus fifteen hundred power, so he becomes four K base. Really solid level zero. Next, we have three of these Enotis, zero zero two K. Uh, she's just a vanilla suit level zero suicider. So, yeah. Next off, two of these. 0, zero Sugumis, 2-5 power. On play, you can pay one discard a card to search for a funeral parlor character. So standard searcher. Next, two of these 0, zero Sugumis, 1500 power. Uh, on play, you reveal the top. You look at the top card of your library, and if it's a level 1 or higher, then you can add it to your hand and then discard a card. And her other effect is when she attacks, you can give 500 power to another character. Next, two of these Zozo Sugumi's 1500 power. Uh, her effect is during your opponent's turn, your center front row character gains plus 1500 power. So it's a nice little power boost. And finally, two of these Zozo zero zero Shoes, 2k power. Uh, he's a brainstorm. You pay one, rest him, and mill the top four. For every climax you hit, you can take a card from your clock and add it to your hand, and then clock yourself from the top of your library. And you do this for every climax. If you hit two, you take a card first, you clock yourself, and then you take a card again and clock yourself. So, yeah. Just the only brainstormer in this set, I believe. So, it's just a standard clock brainstorm, so you got to run it. Let's see, that's, I believe that's 15 level zeros, 4, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, yep. 15 level zeros. That'll do it for my lineup there. Next for level 1s, we have four of these 1-1 one, one Inoris, 6k power. Uh, she has Clock on Court, and she Climax combos with the green 2k one. Let me get that out. This Climax. Uh, the combo is, she gains 1k power, and when she reverses your opponent's character, you can take the top card of your library and put it to your stock. So yeah, four of those, because it's really staple at level 1. Uh, next, two of these, one uh, I completely hot is. Uh, she gives 500 power to all your characters, and at the start of your main phase, you can look at the top card of your library and either leave it there or put it to the bottom. So two of those. Next, we have two of these one Uh 4500 power. Her effect is when you trigger a climax, you can pay one to give one of your characters plus 2500 power until your 2k power, sorry, until the end of your opponent's turn. So, um, essentially, as soon as you trigger a climax, you can pay it out and give a nice power boost to one of your characters, offensively and defensively. So, it's a really good card. Next, two of these 1 1 Inotis, 4k power. Um, on play, you can discard a card to salvage a funeral polar character. And lastly, two of these one Sugumis, 2k power. Uh, she's a 1k backup, but if you have two or more funeral polar characters on the stage, then you can give another one of your characters 1k, so essentially costless 2k backup, which, is, which are really good. So let's see, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 12 level ones. Alright, next for level 2, we have two of these, two one Sugumis, 4500 power. She's a level multiplier in front, so the character in front gets 500 power times their level. And her other effect is when you play another character of yours onto the stage, you can look at the top card of your library and you can either leave it there or put it to the waiting room, and this effect can happen up to twice per turn. 
Next to these two one you know, 6500 power. Her first effect, you can rest her and give one of your other characters 1500 power. And she also has climax phase change with words. This level 3 Inori, uh, being of your climax phase, pay 2 discard a card and send this level 2 Inori to the waiting room and bring this level 3 out. And I'll explain that when I get to level 3. But yeah, that's what this card is. Uh, two of these standard pay 2 salvage 2 events. And lastly for level 2, one 3k backup. Just a vanilla 3k backup. So yeah, that's my level 2 lineup. That's 7 level 2s. Very little, but like usual, you don't really need a lot of level 2s. Alright, for level 3s, we have, first off, 3 of these uh, shoes. Level 3-2, three, three, 10k power. On play, you can he you heal. And his other effect is, you can pay 1, rest 2, char rest two characters, reveal the top card of your library, if that card, reveal card, is a level 1 or higher, then he gains 1k power, and the effect of when he reverses an opponent's level 2 or higher, you can send that card directly to clock. Next up, two of these 3 2 Inotis, uh 10k power. She also heals on play, and her other effect, she combos with the Blind Stock 1 Soul, Uterp. Uh, on attack, you can discard a card. Um, and then you salvage two characters, and she gets plus 1k power. So, a really slow combo. Next, one of these 3 2 Inotis, 90, 95 power. Um, on play, you can salvage a character. And her other effect is, if you have two or more Funeral Prolore characters on the stage, then she gets plus 2k power, so she becomes 11-5 base. So, Overpowered Salvager, which is pretty nice. And lastly, for level 3, we have one of these level 3 Alices, 10k power. Uh, she has minus 1 soul in front, and she also has an effect. Pay 1, discard a card, choose a character on your opponent's stage, and you can move it to a vacant slot, and then she gets plus 1k power. So yeah, that's my level 3 lineup. That's 8 level 3s. And lastly, for climaxes, oops. three two K ones that combo with the level one Inori, two of the blind stock one soul that combo with the level three, and three gates. So yeah, only three plus triggers, but I seem to enjoy this climax lineup a lot. Both of these combos are really nice. So yeah, those are all the cards in my deck, and now I'll go on to explain how I play the deck level by level. Alright guys, so to start things off, uh, for level 0 really, it's just, you have two cards to really kill things. The 4k shoe, which is, you know, a really solid number to hit at level 0, 4k is probably going to get you over, you know, mostly 3.5s, you can trade with 4k's if you really have to. Um, but. That's as high as you're going to hit without playing Climax, which is an okay number. So, it gets the job done. And, like always, if you can't kill anything or you just don't have any more shoes in your hand, uh, you can always just play level 0 Suiciders, trade with theirs. It's always a good thing to have. Um, level 0 is really basic. Like, there's nothing fancy you do. You don't really need to prepare for anything. Just get smacks in, like, like usual, build stock as much as possible. Make sure you pay out your Climaxes with your other level 0s that you have. Um, and yeah, just play accordingly to how the game's going. Um, yeah, that's about it. So I'll just move on to level 1s. Uh, usually I try to get at least one of these out. Uh, it's a global 500, so, you know, it's always nice to have an assist. But her other effect is really nice, because it lets you control your first trigger, or, you know, if you're going to 2k1, your, what your draw is. And it also lets you move climaxes to the bottom, just in case you don't want to trigger them right away. Like, you don't want to trigger them as your first attack, of course. Um, but also, if you do move a climax to the bottom, you want to remember that, because once you hit refresh, that, that last climax won't go in. So I usually try to 
like if I move a climax to move one clean card right under it right after so yeah this card's helpful in like just fixing your triggers and making sure you want to refresh with that last climax and stuff like that um, also I usually like to play this in the back alongside the Hare because her effect is really useful uh, throughout the whole game because um, as soon as you trigger a climax you can pay it out right away so it doesn't you don't need like if you trigger early on in your attacks you don't have to dig through all your stock just to get that climax out you can just use her effect and pay it out and it's a nice power boost so um, she's a really helpful card and I generally keep her in the back when I play her and only move her up when I think you know I'm not going to trigger any climaxes later on I'm close to refresh and there's no real point in leaving her in the back at that point I move her up and have her you know just be one more attacker but until then I usually keep her in the back and it seems to work out just fine for me um, now also for level one a key part of the game is to play these 1-1 one -one Inoris because first off they're your only level one beater that I run in my deck that isn't this but four or five powers really weak anyway so I don't expect to kill anything just level zeros so 1-1 one -one, 6k is pretty weak um, because, you know, 1-0's can hit that high, but she does have clock on course, so that does help you maintain your hand a good amount, and her combo is also really good. Uh, you generally want to get this combo off at least once, maybe twice, hopefully twice, as many times as you can, honestly, because it helps you generate stock, so, like, just a turn like this, you, all three attack, that's a stock, and if you kill something, that's another stock, and it really helps that you have this here because it is a blind stock so if you trigger like a climax around here like before you get to her okay first off you, I generally attack with her last because you want the clean stock to go f or well you want the stock that you know like you know what the stock is to go first and then the blind stock at the end so if you're really scared of the blind stock being a climax you can just pay it out right away um, so yeah that's generally you always want to attack last with this and also this kind of helps you make sure that the stock you're getting beforehand is also clean because then if you do trigger a climax before uh, you can pay it out and you can also give her a plus 2k power so if she wasn't strong enough already then I mean you can make her even stronger and she gets the power to the end so she becomes 8k with clock on core so that that's a lot solid a lot more solid number to have but yeah uh, So, 4 stock at the minimum, 5 stock if you had 2, I'm not really too scared to play 2 because again with the con it helps a lot and it makes the blind stock a lot less scary. So yeah, I mean as long as you can do this combo once or twice then you're already getting ready for later because you do need a lot of stock for your cards later on which I'll explain why as well, but yeah. This is generally a level 1 game. Just keep playing this climax as much as possible, keeping your stock clean, um, making sure you don't trigger any climaxes, you know. You have a lot of tools. Also, I'd like to mention that these two cards aren't Funeral Parlor characters, so you can't search them with the level 0 Sugumi, and you can't salvage them with the level 1 Inori. So, um, I always hold on to them no matter what in my opening hand. And, I mean, if you don't, like, you just gotta hope you draw into them. If you don't, it makes your level 1 game a little more difficult to play around. Because then, the blind stock does become a little more scary. And, yeah. Um. Yeah. That's about it for level 1. Uh, for level 2, I generally move her up if I'm gonna play the level multiplier in the back. Because I want to keep the hot hit and her... I want to keep the hot air around because of the power, as well as her effect, because her effect helps later on, and I'll explain why in a bit. But yeah, it's uh, level two is around the time I move her up because either I'm close to refresh, I know how many climaxes are left, or if there if none are in, left at all, or maybe it's past refresh already. Who knows? But she already did her job in the beginning. Um, for level two, you're plan is to generally, you generally want to play this uh, in Yori, because uh, you do want to change into level 3, 
and that does cost a lot of stock. It's three stock. Climax phase changes are pretty heavy, but you have been, hopefully, you've been playing the level one Inori combo, so uh, the stock shouldn't be that much of a problem. You should have plenty of stock by now, and if you don't, then something went very wrong. Um, but where is it? Yeah, you want to ch your level two game. You generally want to change into this, because then you have a 10k two soul beater, which is great. Um, but you don't want to play her unless you have the level multiplier out, which means you probably you're gonna need three colors by level two. And you're gonna need red, blue, and green because green for level one, so you probably level the, a green, and just the red and blue for the rest. So sometimes it's hard to pull it off. Sometimes I don't have blue, so I can't play level multiplier, and then you're playing just a 10k level three, which is you know very weak. And there's no at that point there's no point in investing so much to get that out. But, yeah, this is generally what you want to have at level 2, a 12k level 10. And she also heals. So, it helps you stay alive a little longer. And, also, if you're running out of hand, and you happen to have, you know, the blind stock one soul in your hand, then her combo is really good to catch you back up, because then you just discard a card and salvage two. And, it's just a really good combo. And it's not really blind stock, because you do get to look at the top card with this, as well as this, so... At most, you're, you're top checking your deck three times a turn. Which is, you know, really nice. At that point, it's not blind stock. And so it's not really scary, like I've been saying before. But... Yeah. So yeah. For level two, change if you can. If it's... If you have a good opportunity. And... That's really it. Another way, if you don't have that combo, and you're losing out in hand, you should have a lot of stock, like I've been saying, um, because of the level 1 Inori, so you should be able to play the event with no problem. If you don't have cards in your hand, start, you know, pay it out before refresh, though, because after you refresh, you're not going to have very many targets, but... So yeah, just pay 2 to salvage 2 is really good. Start getting your level 3s ready, get a Sugami if you don't have one yet, get a Inori, get the Changer, get all kinds of things. So yeah, just prepare for later on. Um, now moving on to level 3. Uh, like with most decks, heal as much as possible with your healers. Because, you know, heals are really good. Staying alive, stuff like that. Um, but Shu is also an endgame. Because he can clock shoot. It's very... A uh, specific clock shoot, but it, nonetheless, it's still a free damage essentially if you get it off. Um, so he's a really good card, uh, and he works well with these cards because they allow you to top check, which means that his effect will be easier to uh, get off. Like you just keep milling through the top until you find a level one or higher, and then you're able to do it perfectly. You can just rest the back two. They generally won't be rested because. Nothing else rests in this deck. So, you should be able to get it off like that. And then he'll become a 13k level 3, which is okay. But since you are trying to reverse a level 2 or higher, it can be pretty difficult. So there are there are a couple tools if you need it. Uh, like always, you can just 2k1 him. There's always that. And you can keep doing the Inori combo, but that's a little scary. Considering, you know, blind stocks are more likely to be climaxes the longer it goes on, because you're generally compressed by now, and it'd be easier to trigger a climax. But uh, there's also the changer. You can play, pay her, pump him 1500 power, so he becomes 145, and then change into the level three Inori. So there's always that. There's also this ISA. Uh, as long as your opponent has a vacant slot and they run maybe a level 2 assist in the back, then you can always play her, pay one, discard a card, move it to the front, and that gives you a, a very easy target to reverse. So, yeah, there are a lot of ways to go around to getting his effect off. Um, but yeah, uh, that's generally it for level 3. It's not, it's nothing too special. Just keep healing as much as possible, salvaging as much as you can. The deck does have a lot of salvage with the combo and the event as well as this TD Inori. She's a really nice beat stick because she's a 11-5 base and she also salvages. 
So lay down low is to salvage, low to voice to keep cycling your heels. Um, this deck was a pretty decent deck in the day, but now not so much because heel loops aren't all that great anymore. Um, but yeah, that's about it for level threes. Uh, and that's yeah, that's generally how I play the deck below. below. So um, next up. I guess I'll just move on to some alternatives that you can try out if you guys don't like what you see. Um, but yeah. Alright guys, so for alternatives, I don't really have that much to show you because I bought the deck in singles. But I do have a couple things I've tried out and taken out because I didn't really like. Or, you know, I've switched around a lot of things in my deck to how I like to play. So I'll just show you a couple things that I have. Uh, first off, this level 0 Inari, she's 500 in front assist, and on play you can pay 2 to salvage a character. Um, this card's pretty nice, because it is a level 0 assist, and a level 0 assists are always nice to have, because um, you just get an early boost early on, and then you can ride them to level 1 and not have to play anything. I don't know what I just said. Um, but, yeah, if you have... You can play her in the back, have level 0 shoe in front, then he's 4-5 power, which is, you know, better than 4k. Um, and her other effect is nice, which means you can play her later on if you need to salvage, pay to salvage on play. It's a nice effect, but I didn't really need... I don't feel like you need the level 0 assist, because 4k is already nice, and then it's a suicider. The other option is a suicider at that point. Um, so... I don't think it's neat, it's very like necessary at level 0, and like I said, I usually like to have my back row as Hade and the Kano, because the Hade for the boost and the effect, as well as the Kano for the effect, so um, to not have both of them in the back is kind of, you know, I don't like, I like having both of them, so I mean if you don't have a Hade, then there's, it's always nice to have more power assist, because I only run two, and you can't search or salvage her unless you trigger a gate. So there are times when you don't get one, and then you're pretty much like your cards get weaker than they are. So and it can be nice to have. It's up to you. You can try it out if you want, but I have not to run this. Uh, next, there's this level one uh, Yahiro, I believe. Um, he's one of six K power, and he has the effect. All your other characters cannot side attack. So, I only run one beater, which is the 1 1 Inori. She's also 6k. So, if you want more cards to play where you can actually kill stuff, then he's a nice, costless 1 0. Um, it's not that big a deal to not side attack, but sometimes it's annoying. But yeah, if you want another beater, there's always this, but I don't feel like I have room for him, so I don't bother running it. Uh, also at level 1, we have this 1 0 Inori 5500. She combos with the gate that I run. Um, on attack, you can pay 1 to salvage a character. So, a really nice combo. Um, it's always nice to pay 1 on attack because if you trigger a climax before, then you can attack, pay 1, pay that climax out. But the Conon's already there, so I don't really have, need that pro have that problem paying out climaxes during your attacking. And her other effect is the downside because she has 1500 power which and she has a combo so she's a little oversized. So the downside is that when she gets reversed your opponent can pick a card from your way room and put it to the top of your library. So yeah, not very good. Um, that effect. Because uh, if she gets reversed then he can like pick a character, put it on top, and then attack and get a free damage in. So, uh, you don't want, you don't want her around, like, later on, because, yeah, that's pretty annoying to, to get a free ping in, but her combo is good, it's just that I already have the level 1 Inori combo, the 1-1, one, one, uh, green one, so having two level 1 combos is rather annoying. I felt it was annoying, because I want to be focusing on the stock combo rather than this one. This one's just like, it's nice to, you know, salvage and pay out climaxes, but um, 
I just want to be killing stuff and getting stuck because I need the stuff for later on. So after playing with this for a bit, I opted to just take it out. And I like the deck how it is now without her. So there's that. And that's really all I have to show you guys. Um, other than that, I think the build is really solid. Um, yeah. Nothing much to say. It's the standard Guilty Crown deck. Uh, red, green, blue. I've had it for a while. I've been playing it for a while. And I... Yeah. This, fun this is like the final build. That I'm not going to change it anymore after this. Uh, this is how I like to play it. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, seeing what I had to show you, and um, if you, like always, if you want to see the deck in action, you can click on the links in the description below, and you can check out some of those dual sets, um, and yeah, that's about it, that's all I have, so uh, like, comment, subscribe, and until next time.